during the early stages when you were thinking about not having any magic at all in it, there wouldn't be any sorcery, there wouldn't be any thing alien, it would just be like an alternative history. Yeah, um, that was one thing that I went went back and forth with uh, in the in the very early days. Um, you know, I love all all of these subgenres of imaginative fiction, uh, horror, science fiction, fantasy. But in, in my earliest days as a writer, I think although I did some fantasies, I did some horror stories. I was prim primarily known as a science fiction writer, and I still think I have a science fiction mindset. I have a, I have a rationalist mindset um, that always balks a little at, uh, at magic. Um, I prefer, as a reader, I prefer low magic fantasies to, you know, high magic fantasies. Um, and always have. So when I'm when I begin this and I'm I'm writing it, I I said, well, to what extent do I want to have any any magic? So I was, you know, if you look at Fever Dream, uh, my my vampire novel, um, it's almost a science fictional treatment of of vampires, because I, I when I approached the vampire legends in that book, again my my rationalism took over and I said, hey, what is this? You know, they can't cross running water. Why the hell can't they cross running water? Why don't their reflections show up in mirrors? Uh, that makes no sense according to everything we know, according to how light works and what mirrors actually are. Well, you know, I mean, that's, that's actually a, a relic of, uh, of religious beliefs, uh, that, that vampires supposedly have no souls and it's the soul reflected in the mirror. Well, of course, we know it's not actually the soul being reflected in the mirror. It's just a light. <laughs> Uh, so, I rationalize my vampires. They still hopefully work as vampires. They're pretty scary, but they're another race that's, uh, that's evolved among us uh, through the centuries and have always, always been there. And they have certain abilities. They're very, they're very tough to kill, but they're, they're not, they can't turn into a mist. They, they can cross all the running water they want. Uh, uh, you know, the, one of the vampires in my books, to precisely because he knows the legends and he wants to eliminate any, any possibility of being mistaken for a vampire. Um, it fills the entire boat with mirrors, so uh, everybody can see that, that uh, him and his friends are all reflecting in the mirrors. So I was playing with that. And I did consider a similar approach with, uh, with Game of Thrones. Uh, should I actually have dragons, or should, I, or should the Targaryens have some sort of, I don't know, pyrokinetic power where they can, uh, you know, almost uh, ESP, they can manipulate flame and conjure a blast of flame, you know, invisible kind of mind dragons or something like that. And I went back and forth, but I finally decided, no, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with the dragons. And uh, I think that was the, I think that was the best choice. But even there, I, I've I've applied as much rationalism to my dragons as you can. I mean, the the, the I look at pictures of dragons uh, in other people's fantasies and all that. I mean, this this beast could never fly. I, I mean, they look at the size of the belt. This is the Brontosaurus with a pair of bat wings stuck on its back <laughs> here. And it's got these little bitty wings and it's got four limbs and this enormous belly and it's, it's too heavy, you know? So I've, my dragons are much more serpentine, they're slender, their wings are huge in, in, uh, compared to the, the body size. And I keep having to stress this to the artist, you know? Not six limbs, not four legs plus two wings. The four legs are the front wings. Uh, now, heraldically, that's a wyvern, not a dragon, which I'm perfectly aware of. But, yeah. uh, you know, there are no six-limbed things in nature. You look at bats or birds, they don't have little forelegs in addition to the wings. The wings are the, uh, the forelegs. So, uh, again, my rationalism is creeping in. And, you know, there, I, I've done panels at, at conventions where I've argued this points with other fantasy writers and saying, they're fucking dragons, who the hell cares? They couldn't exist anyway. You know, you're never gonna have a flying lizard, uh, you know, a big enormous lizard that flies and breathes flame. But, uh, and that's, that's true, I can't argue with that. Uh, yes, it's not a, uh, Anne McCaffrey did her best to sort of make science fiction dragons and even there, it, I don't know that it entirely works, but uh, 
my fantasy dragons would never work, but they're more likely to work than other people's fantasy dragons. So <laughs> they're a little more rational. So uh, I'm I'm pleased with them, and I I like them I like them better. So yes, so I tr decided to do it as a fantasy, but a very low magic fantasy. Right, and the, I believe the original plan was that a Game of Thrones was supposed to end with an event called the Red Wedding, which didn't quite work out. <laughs> uh, was it? <laughs> oh, I don't even remember at this point. Uh, I think from previous interviews you said that. A Game of Thrones was supposed to end with the birth of Danny's dragons, uh, as, it, as it does. Um, but the other events were supposed to be more further along yeah. uh, than, than they were as I approached 1,300 and then 1,400 and 1,500 pages and writing that book. And Danny's story was finished. I had written The Birth of the Dragons, but <clears throat> the stories of some of the other characters weren't nearly to where I wanted them to be. So uh, that's when I decided it had to be another book. So I restructured some of the chapters somewhat, and uh, you know, I had to, I had the ending. I had Danny. I knew that was a good way to go out with the, with the book, and uh, and the the death of Ned was always supposed to be a very important event toward the end of the the book and uh, the shattering of the Stark family. So by the time you got to that point, did you have an ending in mind? Did you have a sort of structure in your head, if a very rough one? For the entire series? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. But you can't know what it is. <laughs> you just have to keep reading, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. So from, right from the very start, did you have this idea that it was going to be a rotating POV between different characters? Yeah, I, I, I've, I've added POVs, perhaps more than I thought. I, I, you know, I, I determined early on that that first chapter that I wrote all the way back in 1991 was a brand chapter. So, and like I said, that chapter almost wrote itself. In some ways, a couple of the most crucial decisions I made about the books that have determined the thing happened immediately after the completion of that chapter. And uh, one of them was, okay, is this a book in which Bran is the hero? Do I now write another chapter from Bran's point of view and a third chapter from Bran's point of view? Is this Bran's book? Or will I use multiple viewpoints? And obviously, the next chapter was from, from Catelyn's viewpoint, so I decided to, to use multiple viewpoints. The other issue was, was uh, an issue of chronology, um, which I sometimes wonder if I made the right choice on. Um, you know, my original concept was that uh, time would pass through these books and that the kids would, would, would grow up more and, you know, years would, would pass uh, within the course of the books itself. You know, you would have a chapter and then you'd have another chapter and it'd be like be a month and a half later and then the next chapter would be three months later. So by the time you finished the book, four or five years would have passed. Um, but I got away from that almost right from the beginning because that second chapter occurs literally within minutes of the end of the first chapter. You know, in the first chapter, they find the direwolf pups. And in the second chapter, Ned is cleaning his sword from just having ridden back from executing the guy, and Cat comes in and tells him that Robert is, is coming. So um, there's, no, there's no time lapse there. And that sort of set the tenor for everything that followed, with, with one event following very quickly after another event. And uh, it, it, the story demanded it be that way, um, because if something is going to happen, um, then you switch to another viewpoint, that character is going to respond to what just happened. Uh, he's not going to wait six months to respond or three months to respond. He's going to respond as soon as he hears about it or as soon as he affects him or what the circumstances are. But of course, the result of that was that uh, the total book occupied a much smaller span of time than I had originally envisioned. And, and in particular, the kids weren't getting very much older. Um, so at a certain point, I started thinking about this fam infamous five-year gap uh, that after Storm of Swords, I would leap forward five years to let the kids get older. And when I finished Storm of Swords, I did try to write with the five-year gap. 
Um, and that was a disaster. The five-year gap didn't work. It was a bad idea. Uh, it worked for some characters, but it really was a ludicrously bad way of handling some other characters. So I finally had to trash that, and along with about a year's work, uh, trying to make that work as well. And so now we have the, the story in the present thing. And more, more viewpoint characters have come in. The story has gotten progressively bigger and more complicated, uh, which is probably one reason why I've, I've slowed down. I mean, I was never a fast writer to begin with. These people do all these charts and all that, showing how fast I turned out the books in the early days. You know, come on. I started writing a book in 1991. It came out in 1996. You know, yes, I was doing other things. I'm still doing other things. Um, but I've never been a fast writer. I've never had a very good record at meeting deadlines. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Nope. Not my fault I blew the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't even mention deadlines. No. <laughs> <laughs>